Greater is the one who's in us. Greater is the one who calls our name. He will never fail. Stronger is the one within us. Stronger is the one who fights for us. He will never fail. You will never fail, for your love endures forever, oh, your love endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light, your love endures forever. Mighty is the one who's for Mighty is the one who's strong to say, He will make a way, you will make a way. For your love endures forever, oh, your love endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light, your love endures forever. Our God is fighting for us always. Our God is fighting for us all. Our God is fighting for us always. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. With your light, your love endures forever. Our God is fighting for us always. Our God is fighting for us all. Our God is fighting for us always. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and You're slow to anger. Your name is great and Your heart is kind. I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul O oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before 
and worship your holy name. And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. I'll worship Your holy name. And wisdom and 
fortress is our God. A sacred refuge is your name. Your kingdom is unshakable. With you forever we will reign. Our God is jealous for his own. None could comprehend his love and his mercy. Our God is exalted on his Fortress is our God, a sacred refuge is your name. Your kingdom is unshakable. With you forever we will reign, so we will set our hearts on you. Lord, we will set our hearts Good morning. I'll talk a little louder. There we go. Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see your smiling faces this morning. Um, my name is, is Bruce Beaver. I'm the youth and family minister here. And uh, once again, we're, we're very glad that you have joined us today. Uh, our, our mission is to love God, love others, and make disciples. And what, everything we, we do, we try to use that as our guide uh, for that. So um, if you are, well, if you're a visitor, if you're, you've been here for years and years, I want to encourage you to, to either uh, fill out the, the connection card in the, in the bulletin, or there's a QR code in front of you that you can do that same thing. Uh, this kind of just lets us know you're here. Uh, you can sign up for the Wednesday night meal uh, through that link. You can also make prayer requests, and uh, our, our shepherds and our staff pray over those prayer requests, uh, and so we, we want you to know that uh, we want to get you connected uh, with the body here. Uh, if you are visiting with us, you are our honored guest, and we'd love to meet you. Uh, we have a connection table just outside these double doors over here uh, that we'll have one of our shepherds standing at after service. Uh, Scott Cox was out there this morning. Love to talk to you and get to know you better. And uh, I think that's it. Be sure you, you grab a bulletin, a lot of good information in there. Uh, at this time, uh, this coming weekend, uh, the youth group, uh, or, or several members of the youth group, and uh, some adults, are, we're traveling to Honduras for our Honduras mission trip. You've, you've supported us so well in our Wednesday night meals last month. Uh, we raised o almost $1,000 towards that mission effort, uh, and that's huge. Yeah, we can clap. That's absolutely... <laughs> And that, that, is, that is huge, uh, so thank you so very much. And at this time, um, we're going to ask that the, we have some team members that are gone this morning, but I'm going to ask those that are here to come up, and uh, I believe Claude's going to lead us in a word of prayer uh, of blessing over our team. And while they're coming up, I'll, I'll tell you some of our, our members of our team. Hobbs Baldridge, uh, myself, and my wife Katie, uh, Caleb Beaver, Peyton Beaver, Annie Brown, Georgia Brown, Jones Brown, which I believe they're all in San Antonio today, or Houston today, uh, and Hobbs is not with us today. Uh, Caleb Carroll, Jane Gibson, Avery Tarbot, and Kylie Tome. Good morning, church. Like, like Bruce said, our, our, our mission here is to love, love God, love others, and make disciples, and what you see up here today is a group of people who will actually put that into action next week. Uh, I've been fortunate to go on two of these trips. I'm a little sad I can't go this trip, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that we get to do. It's a wonderful thing that this church gets to do to send people. 
uh, not just to not just to send money, but to send people. And uh, these these individuals here will come back with uh, a greater faith. Uh, they'll come back with um, an experience that will help them uh, be be God's disciples here here in Belton, Texas. So let's pray pray over them as they be ready to depart. Father God, you call us to be your hands and feet. Uh, you call us to go into all the world, Father. And this morning, uh, I just uh, pray your blessing on this group uh, as they as they travel, as they travel to Houston, as they board the plane, as they as they fly to uh, to Honduras. Uh, give them the experiences, Father, that um, that will grow their faith. Give them uh, the, the safety. Give them people that will touch their hearts. Uh, and Father, um, pray that uh, you will use them uh, to uh, express the love we have through Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a great opportunity, God, that we can uh, send family members to uh, parts of the world that are unfamiliar to us, uh, that may be a, uh, a little uh, um, uh, unsettling to us, Father, but uh, you call us to step out. Uh, in faith, you call us to step out uh, and trust you, Father. And this morning, uh, again, I just pray your blessing on this group. Uh, touch their hearts. Let them be your hands, your feet, as they show your love to, uh, to a world that they're not familiar with. Ask all these things through your son's name. Amen. I want to say good morning again to everyone. Um, can we just start uh, off by giving our God a hand clap of praise as we stand? Because he's just that good. Um, we are here for the express uh, purpose to worship God. No one can do that for you but you. To worship God for ourselves. And so we invite you now to join in with these songs of praise. Amen. Amen. So our first song is Psalm 34, Taste and See. Taste and See. Psalm 34. I saw the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from every
God a hand clap of praise. If you believe he's word, they say amen. 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 At this time, we're going to sing Raise a Hallelujah. We introduced this song last week. We're going to sing it today. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. Oh, oh. 
defeated. Yeah, the King is alive. I'll raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. I'm Quentin Lachlan. I'm one of the shepherds here. I thought I would uh, start the communion thought this morning with what we believe here at the Belton Church of Christ. We believe that there is an almighty, awesome God. We believe that he had one and only son named Jesus that was sent down on this earth, who came to us through a virgin birth as a baby, who grew up to be a man, and to be the best example that we have of what perfection looks like as the person that God wants us to be. He lived a perfect life. He did amazing things. He did miracles. He loved God. He loved others. And he made disciples. That was his, that was his whole life. That's what we try to do here at the Belton Church of Christ as well. He died on a cross, though. And that's what we're here this morning for, to think about as we take communion. He died on a cross when he didn't have to. He died on a cross because of our sin, not because of his. And because of that death, we have the opportunity to live with God forever. We have the opportunity and hope for eternal life with our God. So this morning, as we take this communion, we think about this little little piece of bread of what that represents. Every week we do this. We think about the fact that his body was broken and it was broken on that cross for us and our sin. We think about the blood that was shed and what that means for us. And more than anything that I think about is the fact that he came out of that grave because there was a lot of people that died, right? Jesus died just the same as all of them. However, three days in the tomb, and he comes out alive. And we believe that here at the Belton Church of Christ. That's what we believe. So as we take that communion this morning, I pray that we think about those things. That we pray to God for forgiveness of our sins and to help us remember what his death and resurrection means for all of us. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for this time to come and worship you. Father, what an incredible blessing you have given us. Father, to allow us to come to this church, to be a family together, but also to take, to take a, a communion, a meal together this morning to remember your son and the life that he lived, but also the death that he died and the fact that he came out of that grave and that he is alive today. And Father, I just pray that you help us to think on those things this morning. Father, we are so immensely thankful for the opportunities you give us every day to love you, love others, and to make disciples every day. Father, we pray that we do this. We pray also your son's name. Amen. Send your rain, O Lord. Send your rain, O Lord. Send your rain. Spirit, fill us 
us anew, let your rain come, soften our hearts, pour out your spirit, fill us anew, let your rain come, may your kingdom come, and your will be done on the earth. Before we sing another song, I wanted to acknowledge someone in the audience. Um, my, my good friend, my brother over uh, some years ago, um, it's uh, William Gooch. I call him Gooch, but uh, Gooch, man, raise your hand, man. We, we went to school uh, together. Um, um, some years ago, five, five, a little more than that, okay. All right, that's fine. Um, I don't know if, if you all are acapella fans, if you, if you know the group Durant, um, this guy right here is an extraordinary uh, singer, period. He is just awesome. So um, man, let's just give him a round of applause, man. I, it's good to see my brother. Good to see my brother. Everybody stand with me at this time. A new anointing, a new anointing. This is a season for a new anointing. This is a season for a fresh outpouring. That the sons and daughters of the King of glory will rise and shine. That the sons and daughters of the King of glory will rise and shine. Son and daughter of the King of glory may arise and shine. Every son and daughter of the King of glory may arise and shine.
die. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing? Good. Pretty weather, pretty day, should be pretty this week. So glad you're here. Thanks for joining us in person. We're always thankful for those who join us online. It's such a blessing to have that technology. Who'd have thought in the 70s when I was growing up you could do something like that, but who thought in the 70s anything? Like the person that said, uh, if you say you remember the 60s, you weren't in the 60s. Some of y'all get that on the way home. <laughs> we, uh, we're spending some time in 1 John. I'm not in any hurry. I hope that's okay. But we're, uh, we're rapidly getting to halfway. Um, we'll get there soon. I hope that you're spending some time in 1 John. It won't take you long to read it. 105 verses. So you can read that quickly. John writes, so that we can know, we can know that we are saved and so that we can have assurance of our salvation. I keep saying, maybe you didn't grow up that way. Maybe you didn't grow up with assurance. Maybe you don't have assurance right now. Maybe you're wondering right now, I, I don't know if I'm saved, if I'm not saved, if I'll be in heaven, not be in heaven. Then you need to read 1 John and stay with us in 1 John. Because there's some things that we can know, and John said there's some things that we should know as Christians. So throughout this little letter, he reminds us of what we need to know. Let me illustrate today, because it's what he's going to do. He's going to say six times, here's why I'm writing. Here's why I'm writing. Here's why I'm writing. Here's why I'm writing. He wants to remind us. When our daughter Sydney was in high school running track and cross country, when when she would get her bag ready in the morning, I, I had a period that I would take some three by five cards and I would just write some motivational stuff, motivational quotes, some power of positive thinking, some scriptures, and I would just put those in her bag. Because I wanted to remind her of who she was. I wanted to remind her of the preparation that she had done. I wanted to fill her head with those thoughts. And I think that's why John's writing. So six times he says, here's why I'm writing. So you can find these in chapter 2. Here's the first one. I write to you because. Here's why he's writing. Your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. That's really a foundational truth in Christianity. You, you need to know that. That your sins have been forgiven. A Christian is not a person who's seeking forgiveness. A Christian is not a person who is hoping for forgiveness. A Christian is not a person who's uncertain of forgiveness. Christians should know that they are forgiven. But I know we struggle with that, and John knows we struggle with that. And so John says, that's why I'm writing. That's why I'm writing. I'm writing so that you know that your sins have been forgiven. Think about it. Why do you often struggle with assurance? Because you're not sure if your sins have been forgiven. 
Why do we often struggle with, I don't know if I'm going to heaven or not? Because we're not sure if our sins have been forgiven. We've got sins in the past that we're just not sure that God can forgive. We think God can forgive some of them, but there's something that's hanging on in the past, a skeleton in the closet that you're thinking, I just don't know. I, I don't know. There's sins in the present that we're not sure God will forgive. So we struggle, and we doubt, and we wonder. So John says, here's one of the reasons I'm writing. I'm writing so that you will know that your sins have been forgiven. Maybe that's the only thing you need to hear today, is that your sins have been forgiven. Maybe that's the reassurance that you need. Your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven. Write that on a three by five card and put it on your fridge and put it at work and put it wherever you need to see it. My sins have been forgiven. So John says the first thing you need to know is your sins have been forgiven. Whether you're 15 or 50 or 80, if you need that reminder, that's what John wants to tell us. The next reason, two times he says, I write to you because... You've known Him who's from the beginning, verse 13. Verse 14 says, you've known the Father. Why is that important? He says, I want to remind you that you know God. You know God. Why is that important? Because when you know God, and you know that you have a relationship with God, and you know that you're in fellowship with God. He talked about that in chapter 1, because God wants to have fellowship with us. Then when you know those things, it's not a burden to follow God, because you have a relationship with God. And it's not a burden to keep His commandments. He says, here's why I'm writing. I write to you because you have overcome the evil one. He mentions that two times. You are victorious. When we become Christians, when we become Christ followers, we become victorious. Maybe that's what you need to hear today. Maybe that's the only thing you need to hear today. Is that you need to be reminded that you are victorious in Jesus Christ. Here's what Paul writes. He says, sin shall no longer be your master. You've been set free because we're victorious. Romans 8, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Here's what he writes in Colossians. He says, when you were spiritually dead because of your sins and because you were not free from the power of your sinful self, God made you alive with Christ and he forgave all our sins. He canceled the debt which listed all the rules we failed to follow he took away that record with its rules and nailed it to the cross. God stripped the spiritual rulers and powers of their authority. And with the cross, He won the victory and showed the world that we were powerless. Reminds me of the song that we often sing. When the enemy presses in hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend. Your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory and honor and power and strength to the Lord. John wants us to know, you don't have to live a defeated life. You can live a victorious life. So he says, that's why I'm writing. I'm writing because you need that reminder. Stick that on a 3 by 5 card. Put it on your fridge. Put it in your car. Put it on your dashboard so that you have that reminder. Here's another reason. He says, I write to you because you are strong. Maybe you don't feel that way. Maybe on a day-to-day -day basis you feel weak and powerless, even though we need to know that we are strong. John wants us to know that as Christ followers, the, the reason we are victorious and the reason we can overcome and the reason that sin has no power over us and the reason that we're able to obey God and the reason we're able to love our brothers is because we've been given strength. We've been given strength. Here's what the psalmist writes. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Ephesians, finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Our strength doesn't come from us. Our strength doesn't come from what we do. Our strength comes from the Lord. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling burdened, if you're feeling beat down if you're feeling exhausted, John says, listen, that's why I'm writing. I'm writing because God has given you strength. Keeps going. I write to you because 
The Word of God lives in you. Wow. I want to remind you that the Word of God lives in you. Here's what Paul writes. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Live in you. Inhabit in you. Stay in you. Take up residence in you. Here's what the psalmist writes. Blessed is the man, happy is the man, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water. Here's what we read in Timothy. From infancy you've known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation, and all scriptures God breathed and is useful. Spurgeon said, a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. So we need to be in the Word of God. Maybe you remember when you read about Jesus, when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit led him out to the desert. And for 40 days he was out in the desert. And after 40 days, Satan showed up to tempt Jesus. You remember how Jesus responded every single time to Satan? With Scripture. With Scripture. With Scripture. Maybe that's why the psalmist writes, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So John's writing. He says, listen, I just want to remind you. I want to remind you of your resources. I write to you because your sins have been forgiven. You've known Him. You've overcome. You've known the Father. You're strong. The Word of God dwells in you. And then he gives one command. He gives one command. He says, do not, do not love the world or anything in the world. He's just reminded us of all of our resources. But then he says, do not love the world or anything in the world. So I don't know if you remember last week, he says, I, I want you to love your brothers. And this week he's going to say, here's what I don't want you to love. I want you to love your brothers. That's what you should do. And here's what you should avoid. Don't love the world or anything in the world. So he says, don't love the world. You see, the problem is that many Christians try to follow God while embracing the world. Here's what Jesus said. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't do both. You can't serve both. And so John says, a clear choice has to be made. Either we love God and hate the world, or we love the world and we hate God. You can't do both. You can't mix both. John's fully aware of what the world has to offer. And here's how he identifies the world. He says, for everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does. Interesting. The cravings of sinful man. Maybe your translation says lust. Lust. You know, God created us with certain desires. And there's nothing wrong with those desires as long as those desires don't control us. You can control your cravings or your cravings can control you. Again, your translation may say lust of the flesh. He talks about lust of his eyes. Anything that our eyes see that becomes overwhelming to us. And then he mentions boasting of what he has and does. He's talking about boasting of ourselves, boasting of what we've done, what we've accomplished, where we've been, where we're going. And in John's mind, believers should have nothing to do with those things. In John's mind, believers should have nothing to do with what the world offers. So he says, do not love the world or anything in the world. Here's what James says. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. So John says, I want you to have an eternal perspective. The world and its desires, they're going to pass away. But the man who does the will of God lives forever. He wants us to know that what the world offers is temporary. What the world offers will vanish what the world offers is not eternal. Paul puts it this way. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart. 
Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We cannot claim to be a Christian and claim the things of the world. So John says, you need to make a choice. Here's what Jesus says. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, here's our dilemma. How do we live in the world without the world living in us? Interesting. I like the translation from the message here and in Romans 12. The love of the world squeezes out our love for the Father. In Romans 12, do not let the world squeeze you into its mold. Hmm. Or as the song we sing, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and... I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Many years ago, the government had an idea to make a dollar in the form of a coin. Maybe you collected this coin, the Susan B. Anthony dollar. Susan B. Anthony, I think this was 77, 79, late 70s, the first woman to appear on a U.S. circulating coin the Susan B. Anthony that honored women's suffrage. It failed. You want to know why it failed? Because it looked just like a quarter. There's a little bit of difference. Very little size difference. But if you went in and threw it down somewhere, they'd think it was a quarter. Because it looked just like a quarter. John wants us to know the reason we struggle many times as Christians is because we look too much like the world. We still have value. But if we look too much like the world, we will fail. And so John says a clear choice must be made. And he tells us in the form of a command, and he says, do not love the world or anything in the world. We shouldn't look like the world. We shouldn't resemble the world. The world shouldn't look anything like us. Or as Paul says, our citizenship is in heaven. Peter says, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world, aliens and strangers in the world, we don't belong here. We don't live here. We shouldn't resemble here. We shouldn't look like here. It's okay to want the things of the world, but it's not okay if we want the things of the world more than we want God. Listen, church, if you have a heart full of God, there's not room for anything else. So John says, do not love the world or anything in the world or anything the world has to offer. And when you do that, you can have assurance. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the beauty of the day, the sunshine, the weather, the change of seasons. We thank you for the church. We thank you for this church. Father, we thank you for everything we have in Jesus. Father, fill our hearts full of you, full of Jesus, so that there will be no room for anything else, so that we won't love the world, so we won't Love what the world has to offer. Remind us, Father, that our love needs to be for you and we need to place you on the highest place. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. If we could all stand at this time. I'm going to call up my friend, Gooch, William Gooch. And he's going to sing just... A little talk with Jesus. Let's give him a round of applause. Hi. 
to see. Hmm. What you need? A flat. Mm. That'll work. Mm. I once was lost in sin, but my Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Well, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. goodness. <laughs> Woo. Gucci got me happy. <laughs> you better sing. Um, at this time, we're going to close out by singing, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. you and keep you. Have a great week, everyone.